song of grateful praise. For the beauty of each hour of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light, God of all to you we raise this our song of grateful the joy of ear and eye, for the heart and mind's delight, for the mystic harmony, linking sense to sound and sight, God of all to you we raise, this our song of praise. joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild, God of all to you we raise, this our song of grace. Welcome. I'm Jonathan Morgan, the senior minister of First Congregational Church on the corner of 23rd and Harris, and I'm delighted that you have joined us for worship. Our service today will celebrate the beauty of nature as we lift up all of creation and celebrate Earth Day. I would like to thank Kristen Graves, who is a friend of mine back in snowy Connecticut who will be offering her lovely voice in just a few moments as she sings Earth Song. And so, let us set aside some time now and offer our thanks for the beauty of creation and all the ways that it fills our life with joy and meaning. Let us set aside our anxieties, our concerns, our worries, to be in this spirit of worship, knowing that God is ever-present. Welcome everyone, and happy Earth Day. We begin with a psalm of thanks. It is good to give thanks for the boundless mercy which renews us and makes us whole. Happy are those who know this and open themselves to the light and sing. You make the sunrise and the sunset shout for joy. You are Earth's fertility. Your law governs her cycles of snow, runoff, flood, and rain. You crown the year with abundance. The lands are watered with dew. The hills deck themselves with green. The meadows adorn themselves with flocks. The valleys gown themselves with grain. They dance together 
they join in song. Glory to you, creator and sustainer. Glory to you for the awesome gift of life. We pause and remember that the God who created and sustains us is never far from us. In God, we live and move and have our being. Let's join in prayer. O oh God, Holy Spirit, whose breath gives life to the world and whose voice is heard in the soft breeze, we need your strength and wisdom. Come to us and among us, especially on this Earth Sunday. Come as the wind and cleanse us. We join with your creation and with each other to restore the waters, to refresh the air. We join with the earth and with each other to renew the forests, to care for the plants, to protect the creatures, to celebrate the seas, and to sing the songs of the stars. We join with earth and with each other to recall our destiny, to renew our spirits, to reinvigorate our bodies, to create human community that cares for one another and our precious home. We are full of the grace of creation and we ask that you help us to create a healthy world for our children and all those to come. We pray, O oh God, that you are raising up people even today to bring us through this dark time. Life-giving God, we offer ourselves in service to you, supported by a great cloud of witnesses who urge us on. We are connected to other people of faith, and conscience around the world who are working for a peaceful, just, and sustainable world. We are related to the earth and all its creatures in a web that cannot be broken without injury to all. As we see and touch the world of splendor that is all around us at this moment, may we pause to ask, what is God saying to us? How should we respond? Teach and inspire us with what is ours to do. We yearn to share your love and bring your gifts to this world. So help us, God, to live and act in harmony and interdependence with all your beautiful creation and to bring your dream for life here and now. And now we join voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hi. Um, during this time of uncertainty and some difficulty, I have been trying to stay present in the moment as much as possible, which can be hard with five of us at home and a dog. <laughs> but yesterday I went into the garden um, after a morning of sort of frustration and anxiety and I wrote this and I wanted to share it. It's called In the Garden. The wind is carelessly playing the chimes, filling the air with energy and urgency. Then suddenly there is a ceasing, silence so settling slowly to stillness. The quiet, the waiting unsettles me, makes me anxious to fill the space with something. I should check my phone. I need to weed that flower bed. I better go check on the kids. The air stirs and the chimes call to me again, now gently. Come back, listen to right now. I look up and I see the large cherry tree, completely shrouded in white puffs, petals slowly snowing down. The warm spring breeze 
gently strokes my cheek. There is a sweetness to the air, cherry and apple blossoms calling to the bees. The heat of the sun pushes into my belly. I am suddenly more alive. The beauty of right now cuts through my soul. I could cry it so intense. The joy and the love of this moment completely embracing me. I am intricately, wholly, and inescapably connected to all of it. I feel held and I smile in gratitude. The trees shiver and dance in agreement. I find my breath again and inhale deeply the sweet warmth of spring. And I know without a doubt that God is truly as close as that breath. Heaven is as close as this moment of just noticing. Hi, my friends. It's so good to be here with you today. This coming week, we will be celebrating Earth Day. Such a wonderful chance to celebrate and appreciate God's amazing creation. But not just celebrate and appreciate, but to think about our place as part of God's creation. Part of God's creation and also caretakers of God's creation. We have a dual role. And when I say God's creation, I mean all of it. People, animals, plants, insects, clean water, soil, even the stars above. All part of God's amazing, amazing creation. So I was thinking about our role taking care of God's creation and I was thinking about what do we take care of best? Well, we take care of best the things that we love the most. Parents take care of their kids. We take care of our pets. We take care of our friends. We take care of our favorite toy. We take care of the things that we love. So I have a little job for you this week. I want you to go out and fall in love or rekindle an old love or deepen an existing love with God's creation. And you're probably saying to yourself, Gretchen, we can't go anywhere. We can't go check out Yosemite or Mount Rainier or even go to the Orient Coast. What do you mean fall in love with God's creation? But we don't need to go somewhere big. Let's just go outside into our front yard or our backyard. We won't go far, but what we're going to do is we're going to go slow. We're going to look carefully, look deeply. And we're going to look for something that makes us go, cool, God. Awesome, God. Wow, God. Thank you. Because I find that when I experience the awe in God's creation, I also feel gratitude. When I think, wow, God, cool, God, I also think, thank you, God. I love that. So gratitude and love for God's creation stems from this feeling of awe. So I'm going to take you on a little field trip. I want to show you two things in my yard, two very, very small things that made me go, cool. Wow, God. Thank you, God. And see this plant behind me? I'm going to kind of move closer to it. I don't really like this plant. Or at least I didn't used to. It was sort of overgrown, growing over the path in my yard. And guess what? I was thinking about, oh, should I cut it back? And then guess what I did? I looked more closely. I slowed down. And then I decided that uh, this plant needed a name. The Ladybug Hotel. This plant right here. When it's daylight, midday, and sunny, and I stop and look, every little flower 
is a potential home for a ladybug. When I stop and look at it, I see not one, not two, not three, usually four or even more ladybugs making their homes in these little flowers, in these little ladybug hotel rooms. Wow, God. Cool, God. This plant is a ladybug hotel. Thank you, God. I don't know if you can really see this very well, but this is a little part of my yard that you can't see from the road or from the yard. You have to go behind some other bushes. And when I went back here one day, I'm not even sure why, guess what I found? on the fairy circle. A fairy circle of thousands of forget-me-nots and bleeding hearts and azalea. Not cultivated, not cared for, just growing. Wow, God. Awesome, God. Cool, God. fairy ground, my own fairy round in my yard. Thank you, God. Some of the miracles of God's creation are tiny, and they are a blessing just like the big, amazing, shocking, flashy parts of God's creation. So go out this week, go into your front yard or your backyard and look carefully, look deeply. Take your time. We're not going anywhere like the Grand Canyon. We're just going into our yard and it's okay because it's all God's creation. Look around. Find something, something, even something tiny that makes you say, wow, God, cool, God, awesome, God. Thank you, God, for your amazing creation. Find something small that fills you with big awe, big gratitude, and even bigger love for God's creation. And then let's put that love into action. Because remember, just as these tiny, small miracles can make us feel big love, even our small actions can make a big impact. So go find something small that fills you with awe and gratitude and love for God's creation. Take that big love and do something for God's earth. Psalm 96, as interpreted by Nan Merrill. Oh, sing to the cosmos a new song. Sing to the beloved, all the earth. Sing to the creator and bless the name above all names. Sing praises to the glorious one from day to day. Declare the splendor of the radiant one to all nations, the marvelous works of love to all peoples. For great is the beloved and greatly to be praised. Reverence love above all else. For where your thoughts are reveals that which you treasure. Seek only the true treasure, truth and integrity. Live with love, strength and beauty dwell with the beloved. Yield to love, O families of the earth. Yield to love's glory and strength. Yield to love and learn of justice. Make of yourselves an offering and be guided by love. 
bow down in adoration and holiness for worthy is the beloved to be praised in all the earth the creator of the cosmos reigns yes the world has been created gift to all generations let truth and justice give birth to peace and harmony let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice let the seas laugh and all that fills them. Let the fields exult and everything in them. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the coming of the beloved who reigns in glory. For through love will come truth and justice, offering all the people gifts of new life. Among the Trees by Mary Oliver When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locusts, equally the beech and the oaks and the pines, they give off such hints of gladness, I would almost say they save me, and daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself, in which I have goodness and discernment, and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly, and bow often. Around me, the trees stir in their leaves and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches, and they call again. It's simple, they say, and you too have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light, and to shine. The Avenue of the Giants. I love that name. It's one of the most favorite places on earth for me. Right along the northern California coast, beautiful redwoods towering, some of them almost 400 feet tall. I love being there. And I've always loved trees. When I was a boy, I used to sort of hang out in my maple tree in the backyard. I would climb up 50, 60 feet and then find a seat in the branch, a boy size seat. And there I would just contemplate life, be away from the tumult of my family, and just connect with nature. I would stay there what, what seemed like for hours. I remember watching the ants crawling up the bark and thinking, how did they get here? They might have thought the same of me. Here's the thing about trees. I believe they have a presence. You can feel it when you're in the woods. There's wisdom, a deep wisdom. And I'm not meaning like the ants of Tolkien days, those giant beings, tree beings. I mean regular trees. In his book, The Hidden Life of Trees, What They Feel, How They Communicate, Discoveries from a Secret World by Peter Wallenben, we're given insight into the world of trees. One of the things he says is they move at a much different pace. And of course, they're much older. There's a tree in Sweden that is almost 9,500 years old. I never knew that. I also didn't know that they communicate from the roots to the tips of their branches through electric impulses that move up the trunk, similar to our nervous system, but a much slower pace. It moves at a third of an inch per second. Why do they communicate this way? Well, they have a lot to talk about. We know that there's a tree in Africa, for example, that when giraffes come along and nibble on its branches, it sends off a fragrance so that the other trees nearby will know that they're in danger. And so those trees can form a substance that will make it less palatable. We also know that there are trees that 
produce another type of aroma that attracts predators when bugs attach it. So they are able to communicate to one another through their branches. They're also able to do so through their root system. Recent research has shown that through the fungus network underneath the ground, trees communicate with one another, sharing information, offering warnings. They help one another. In fact, one of the reasons why trees do so well together as a group is because of that network underneath, something that we don't even see. Such is the wisdom of trees. So what can we learn as human beings? I think the first thing is to slow down. This is a beautiful spot, and I've been in a lot of beautiful areas of the country. I'm about 200 feet away from the back of my house, a house that I've lived in for seven years. I have never been to this spot, ever. I never knew it existed, and it's lovely. We need to slow down and appreciate what's all around us. And we need to communicate better. We need to share what's really important to the people around us. Co-workers, neighbors, strangers, loved ones. Do your loved ones know that they are indeed loved? Share that with them. Let them know. Trees also teach us how to cooperate and coexist together, something that humans seem to have a hard time with. We're in such competition with each other. One of the things that Peter says in his book is that trees are always living in relationship with one another and they're helping each other, strengthening their root system by intertwining their roots, cooperating together through that communication system. They're living together in a most beautiful way. Can we do the same? And I think we can support one another just as trees support one another. In the coming days, we at First Congregational Church are going to start the Feed the Lamb or Feed the Sheep initiative. There's a lot of herd out there. And we have this social distancing going on and it makes our job a lot tougher. How can we be creative and supportive to those around us? even if we can't be in close proximity to them. How can we show our love, a love shown to us by God, that more may know of God's grace? I look forward to seeing some of the innovative ways that we'll live this out together. And so as we think about creation and celebrate this Earth Day in these strange times, I invite you to go out into nature and just be present. Listen to life growing all around you. Be present as God is present and imagine what might be possible if you were able to learn from the great wisdom of the trees. God bless. Hi everyone, it is nice to see you, or I should say it's nice to be seen by you. Um, I hope that you are doing well, I hope that your loved ones are well, and I wish you a very 
happy Earth Day from a, a healthy social distance. <laughs> Step on the beach, look out to sea. A great escape from my fear. Thoughts pull me in to the water, all oh so deep. From within, I hear she's calling. Let me fall down Please Bring me back to solid ground And I will wait For you To love me Follow the trail Hike up the hill through the clouds, the air's so still. Standing alone, looking down on what we've built. A brave little bird comes to sing, and she's calling. Please don't let me fall down. solid ground and I will wait for you I alone will love you I alone will stay I will hold you safe in my Let me fall down. Please bring me back to solid ground. Please don't let me fall down. Please bring me back to solid ground. And I will wait for you. And now may the courage of the early morning dawning and the strength of the eternal hills at noontime and the peace of the open spaces at evening's ending and the love of God abide in your hearts now and forever. Step on the beach, look out to sea. A great escape from my fear. Thoughts pull me in to the water, all oh so deep. From within, I hear she's calling. Please don't let me fall down. Please bring me back to solid ground, and I will wait for you to love me.